Okay, thank you everyone for being here today. There are so many people that have helped to make today possible. I doubt I could begin to thank you all. But thank you to all the people who've handed out flyers, written emails, made calls, put up stages, tweeted, Facebooked and spread the word about today and about what's happening to our NHS. People fi finding people to help was not hard at all. I no sooner mentioned organising a rally than people were offering me time, equipment, money, advice. People I didn't know, people who live as far away as Scotland, they aren't even affected by what's happening in, in England. Well, why was that? Why would strangers help me like that? Well, I have a theory. I believe it's because people are fundamentally decent. They care about things and each other. I know, I know, that's quite a radical suggestion these days, isn't it? That human beings are civilised and caring and compassionate. It's a concept that's been mocked and diminished over the last 10 to 20 years. We see so much hate and violence and crime and selfishness on our TVs and in the newspapers. It's quite easy to become bitter about the world and mistrust your neighbours and point the finger at people. You can isolate yourselves from each other and focus on taking care of your own. In fact, I would say we're being encouraged to do exactly that, only ever asking, how will this affect me? Oh, well, those people lost out there, but they probably deserved it. There must be scroungers, there must be illegal immigrants, single mothers, there probably benefits cheats. I hear people saying things like, oh, well, yes, they wouldn't have taken that benefit off them if it wasn't right. Or why should I pay my taxes for you to sit at home all day? But hardly ever do people take the time to find out a full story, to ask why a family with three children, a nice house, a widescreen TV ends up needing benefits. The truth is, benefits fraud is a tiny expense. Most, almost half, in fact, of our benefits bill goes on pensions. A small part goes on out-of-work benefits, and the rest is spent on propping up working families struggling to keep their heads above water, to pay rising fuel bills, extortionate childcare costs, to, build, to buy food or to feed their families. Families whose pay has been frozen for the last five years and they're starting to feel the pinch. They're on zero-hour con zero contracts and can't rely on a regular wage. They have high rent costs. These people aren't the cause of our problems. They're the victims of this problem. But these things are bypassed, forgotten, certainly by the media, almost inevitably by most politicians, and often even by us. Why? Why are we talking about making 25-year-olds move back in with their parents and not talking about people being exploited on low wages or workfare schemes or humiliated by ATOS? Why is that? Why indeed? Well, we need to stop. We need to refocus on the real public enemies, on the secret billionaires and the tax-evading greedy executives, the fraudsters who've gambled our nature's futures, betting our hospitals on stocks and shares, our schools on commodities and bonds. We need to stand together and say no more of this. It's more than just a sum of its parts. It's more than an expensive foible we can't afford in austere times. It's a shining beacon of humanity. It's a, symbol. it's a symbol of what happens when people come together and work to make things happen. It's a symbol of social cohesion and social responsibility. It represents working for the good of many, not just profits for a few elite rich people. The NHS is part of us. It's made by us, it's used by us, it's owned by us, and it's loved by us. Yeah. I've been asked a lot of times why I organise this event. Well, I'm a mother. My children are over there, actually. You can spot them, they're the gorgeous ones. <laughs> And I fear for them, I fear for their future, I fear for the future that we all face. I'm betting in this crowd there are a lot of mothers and fathers worrying about their kids. Can, what can they hope for them for a job? What can, they, what can they hope for an education? University? Ha! It 
isn't enough. I can't accept that we have to worry about whether or not we can afford our children developing diabetes or cancer or needing an A&E. I can't accept that some hospitals won't offer urgent care or drugs because they're simply not unable to make enough profit out of it. I can't accept that there are ha people are having to wait for hospital beds because they're being used up by people simply because they can afford to pay for them, not because they need them the most. I can't accept it. I won't and neither should you.